Oh, hi there. You're probably wondering what I'm doing with this 10 inch when uh, bandsaw when I've got a Mini Max 16 sitting right over there. Now that's a question I hope my wife never asks me. Stay tuned and we'll see if we can uh, come up with some answers. Welcome back to Victory Woodworks with Vic, and I'm Vic. And today we have an interesting video for you. Uh, in this video, we're unboxing, assembling, and reviewing the WEN BA3962 bandsaw. Uh, we're going we're gonna to discover what kind of features it's got, uh, fun functionality, and, and help you decide whether or not you should be buying one of these also. Let's, let's unbox this and see what we have inside the box. Just so you know, I got this from Amazon. No sponsorships involved. It was about $325, uh, including shipping, which I believe was free for this one. There was no other box around this box. As you see, it is the way it came. I think there was another one of these over here, but we seem to have lost that in shipping. I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, I checked around the box itself, and it looks to be in pretty good shape. So let's see what's inside. Looks to be packaged pretty well so far. Got this cardboard here. Okay, so the top, we have the manual. We will probably need that. Uh, looks like a, a very chinzy miter gauge. Uh, we'll probably need that, but uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure I've ever used a miter gauge on my on my band saws, uh, but we'll see. This looks like the, uh, the fence guide that mounts to the front of the band saw, so you can slide it back and forth and potentially use some of the measurements. Let's see what else we got here. We got the tabletop. Uh, aluminum. And on this side, we've got several bolts, most likely to mount this to the trunnion. We have a little bag of nuts, bolts, looks like an Allen wrench, plus a couple knobs. Most likely help us in the assembly process. We have several very heavy legs. Okay, what do we have here? We have the fence. Here's the fence for the unit. Well, this one looks to be in better shape than some of the other videos I've seen on, on the, the fence itself. Seems to be that they finished it a little bit better. I think that's all we have in this box, or in this part of the box. And we have lots of styrofoam. And here we have the bandsaw itself. We have the unboxed uh, WEN bandsaw. We have the legs here. We have the guide rail. We have the fence. We have the miter gauge. And we have an assortment of screws, bolts, and nuts, and knobs to actually put everything together. So uh, why don't we go step by step through the manual, figure out what it is we need to do to make this thing operational. Step one calls for uh, for assembly of the legs onto the, the base of the uh, bandsaw unit here. And that calls for tipping it back onto its back onto a four by four. Since I don't have a four by four, I got two two by fours. I'm gonna use that instead. Pretty damn good packing. Okay. Next, it calls for uh, M816 carriage bolts and washers to be attached to a leg that's bolted into the bottom piece here. Essentially, like that. Okay, all four legs are attached loosely 
Now let's see what we need to do next. Attach the long and short cross pieces. All right, sounds simple enough. It's pretty obvious which way these go. Short pieces go across the short side. Long pieces go across the long side. All righty, all the legs, all the braces, everything's in, loosely fit. Uh, what we're gonna do is just check to see what we're gonna do most likely, put it down on the floor, level things out, tighten everything down. Level this out so that we're level, period. Even though the floor's not level, the bandsaw is level. Next step here is to mount the table uh, to the table saw. Gotta loosen these up a little bit so they can move around. And we're gonna have to slip this in this way. And underneath here are four screws that need to go through here up into the table itself. We're gonna do that with uh, M6 by 10 screws and, and a nut driver. And a nut driver is 10 mil. Found that tilting this to the 45 or more seems to be the easiest way to get up underneath here to set the screw into the slot underneath and then into the table itself. Okay, that last nut was a son of a gun to get in there. Once you got it in there, it's pretty easy. Just tighten it up and you're back to where you need to go. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is install this little piece and just make sure that we're perpendicular, the table's perpendicular to the blade. In the back here is an adjustment post with a nut. So we're gonna, we're gonna see what we need to do, if anything. So let me get my, my square out. And you know what? It looks to me like the blade is square to the table. Okay, so we're good there. Next uh, on the assembly is the uh, guide rail with these nuts or bolts or knobs, whatever, whatever the hell you want to call them. And what's interesting, I didn't notice this before, but they've got this interesting pattern where you can put the, all the knobs in, put it in, slide it in and out. It's just way if you need to take it off because of blade change, it's nice and easy. So why don't we saw these first. Goes right in. Everything's in and tight. Let's bring the fence over figure out how this goes and it looks to me like it slides in the groove here make sure it's loose put it on and then just slide it in uh, it's okay Whoa! look at that movement now there are bolts inside here for for the adjustment so let's uh, let's get this square Adjust those. These four Allen wrenches were provided as part of the kit. This is for, looks like the bolts in here for the trunnion adjustment, and these are for various other pieces. Here I'm just trying to see what fits. And it looks like this one fits. All right, so now we've got motion. What I'm going to do is get my one, two, three square. And for now, we're just going to put it in here to get it squared up. And then eventually we'll adjust for drift. Make sure these are tight, tight. Once it's clamped down, because you see it moves a little to the right when you're clamping it down. I don't know why that is. All right, it's got some motion. I mean, again, 
for a $300 bandsaw. It is what it is. But that looks to be, looks to be okay. Uh, and now let's see if we can set the scale. So again, we've got uh, one, two, three block. This should be around two, two inches. And almost. Now, let's see how we can adjust that. Two little tiny screws in the bottom. That's kind of awkward. So I'm looking here at the sight glass. It's a little off. You got these two little micro screws in here to allow you to move that over. Uh, I'm not sure I like that. It should be something from top, making it a whole lot easier to, uh, to lock it in. Also, if you see, you can see it pushing as it clamps down. All right, so let's try to get these screws so we're close to, closer to marks. To be honest with you, I don't think I'll ever use it this way, where, where we're trying to align that sight glass to, to the unit. So we're off by at least quarter inch there. So we'd have to move that over. All right, let me find a tiny screwdriver and let's get to it. Okay, found a tiny screwdriver. Just uh, gonna unloosen these, just enough so they can move. And it can, just a little bit. Again, if these were up top, it would be a whole lot easier to align it. Fit it in, press it up lightly. It's around the three inch mark. All right, looks like that kind of worked. A little cheesy, a little flimsy, but again, 325 bucks, 10 inch, it is what it is. Okay, so let's, we've talked about two out of the three adjustments, which is, or actually maybe three of the three. One for the table here, set at level and perpendicular to the blade, that's all set. We have the guide rail in, and we've able to set the cursor to uh, approximately where it needs to be. Like that zero, and we're off by, it looks like a 16th on the thing. I think it's as close as we're gonna get. Next is the miter gauge. Plastic, aluminum, comes with the profile on it to fit into this slot. So you put it on there. A little twisty action if you want. To be honest with you, I don't think I'm ever gonna use it. So there's that. Um, okay, let's open this up and see what's inside here is this is the top half here's the wheel oh look at that balanced wheels that's always nice uh this is here lock for the vertical adjustment for for the blade looks like we've got some adjustments here for tensioning the little little uh bearings that are in here for, for that blade uh down below here we open up that door also uh same thing looks like it is balanced. Uh, we hope it's balanced, put it that way. And that's about it. Not much else here. Let's, uh, we should probably give this thing a little plug in and see uh, what it does. And let's see, button wise, we got, got the light. And we've got the on and off. Oh, there's a surprise. That is incredibly quiet in comparison to my other guy. Not bad, not bad. So let, let's get a piece of uh, scrap wood and let's give it a shot and see what it can do. So I have a piece of maple here that is, you know, seven eighths, almost an inch, maybe an inch. Shave off a little bit. Okay, you see the cut, it's not very clean. Uh, I think a lot of that just could be this blade itself. Let's see if we can uh, 
tighten this up just a little bit because it may be too loose. I can see as I'm pushing blade is wandering. Now the big question is how much of that is the blade? Let's make this a little tighter and give it another cut. Um, we did buy some other blades though. We have uh, I think a quarter inch and uh, three eighths inch blades over there. So we'll try those two because I'm pretty sure the manufacturer did not give us a very good blade, but we'll see. So a lot of deflection there. So let's see. Here's the piece we cut. I'm gonna get the old calipers out and let's just see. This end is is that five thirty seconds? This end is one eighth, which is four thirty seconds. So we got about a 132nd difference. Let's see what it is in the middle. 964. Yeah, so uh, as we get to one end and the other end, it seems to to deflect a little bit. Possibly a blade issue. We'll, we'll check on tensioning and we'll see what we have to do there uh, and make sure that this is aligned properly. Because it's very possible that the bearings are not where they need to be. And we'll have to take we'll have to take a look at that. So we got our bandsaw assembled. Did a couple test cuts. Uh, well, let's talk about some of the pros. Well, it's small. The reason I got this one, uh, in addition to my Mini Max 16, is because the Mini Max 16 is large. It's for resawing and larger types of cuts. This I want to do a little more fine, uh, fine cutting. You know, uh, we'll get to some of those projects soon. Uh, also on the Minimax 16, I've added the Carter uh, blade guides. So the smallest blade I can comfortably put on there, I believe is about three quarters, which makes, makes for a very large radius where if you need to make curves. Here, I can put a one eighth inch blade, which theoretically, I guess you can do a one quarter inch uh, curve, which is one of the reasons I, I wanted to go this way. This thing does have two speed options, but to be honest with you, uh, it's a pro for some folks. I don't really see myself using that. Um, sturdy stand, yeah, it has a sturdy stand. I also have a, a mobile stand there that I'm gonna put this onto. So at some point I'll, I'll reconfigure that so I can slide this thing around. Easy blade changes. Well, I'll tell you on my mini back, since I put on the Craig table, uh, uh, not the Craig table, the, the Craig fence and assembly, it's not that easy to uh, change the blade. I have to take that apart, change the blade out and then screw it back into where it needed to be. Here, something similar. You got these hand knobs down here, which are easier than, than, other, than other fences to assemble and reassemble, the same type of thing. Here's a slot, pops out this way. You need to pull all this stuff off. So uh, pro, con, I don't know. Easy to change, but not that easy to change. Price point, 300 bucks plus or minus. Not bad. You know what, I, I think this, uh, this would be exactly what I need to finish off some of the CNC projects where you got to cut out some of the tabs and a few other pieces like that, as well as, like I said, doing some fine uh, curves and cuts. Uh, again, one of our projects in the future, I don't want to give it up just yet, but in time for Christmas, we're, we're looking for some of that stuff. Um, we have dust collection over here, but to be honest with you, I don't find that dust collection on a bandsaw works all that well. On my Mini Max, it's got a whole setup there. I've got a, a four inch hose going to it. And to be honest with you, just as much I think goes into the, into the, uh, into the vac as it does everywhere else. So there's that. Uh, limited cutting depth, I believe. Let me grab my 
my tape measure here, we can do about six inches. Limited, yeah, but it's a small saw. It's got a small motor. Do you really want to cut six inches on here anyway? You're not going to be resawing on this saw. This is not, not what it's for, at least not my shop. And then uh, the blades, very cheap. Um, I bought a whole bunch of blades uh, on Amazon for about 15 bucks for a pair. Quarter inch blades and three eighth inch blades, which on our next project we'll actually go through and I'll show you what I'm going to do with those. So that's really it for the pros and cons. Please don't tell my wife I bought this, although I think she saw it on the front step before I can get it in the garage. It is what it is. But that's, that's why I got the two. Smaller projects, more fine work, uh, cutting cutting tight corners, resawing larger cuts, that sort of thing um, for, for the larger mini max. So I'm just gonna re read my uh, concluding thoughts here. You know, having the WEN 10 inch alongside my mini max is really a strategic decision. Uh, this choice allows me to have more versatile, portable and budget friendly solutions for certain woodworking tasks, like uh, reserving a mini max for larger, heavier duty applications. Uh, the WEN offers a lot for its price. It's compact, versatile, easy to assemble. You saw that, even though I struggle with the uh, four bolts underneath here. However, it's got some limitations. Size, depth of cut, power in the blade, or power in the motor to drive the blade. Uh, but overall, I think it's gonna be a good addition to the shop, although we'll find out. You'll be the first to know whether I think that this, you know, a month or two or three or four or five projects later, whatever the case is, if it's actually worthwhile. So if you found this video helpful, you learned something new, please like, subscribe, tell your friends, keep watching the videos. Until next time, stay passionate about your woodworking and I'll see you in the next video.